This is Twit. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, I'm going to be grumpy today. You did not get to try it on, Micah Sargent. I did not. Uh, the most that I got to do was walk into a room where there was this sort of center table and there were two headsets on uh, poles. This reminds me a lot of when the iPhone came out. And <laughs> yes. You couldn't really you couldn't really go near it. And you just see this animation playing on the front screen. Um, is this your TikTok or is uh, this no, I, somebody else's TikTok? Oh, the, yeah, I guess it is. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, it's our TikTok. Yeah, it's our TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> here's, your, here's your video from our uh, Slack uh, channel. Very, very crowded. How many of them did they have there? Uh, they had, I believe, well, I guess it's double. So it was uh, six around the table. And I wonder, you know, they're doing these. Um, there's a there's a close up of it. They're doing these demos for people yesterday and today. I imagine because it's stretched out so far that there are a handful of them. There are not only are there a handful yeah. of them, but what is important to understand is that much like the first iPhone, where if you push the wrong button, everything fell apart. Yeah. That is what we are seeing with these headsets. These headsets. So people are who are doing the demos are saying very guy well, highly guided. Yes. There's another part to this, which I should mention, which, it, and I think this is a big problem for it is you have to set it up. You have to have your face shot mm -hmm. with the with the uh with the device, the mm -hmm. Vision Pro, but also your ears scanned with your iPhone. You have to have your face scanned with the iPhone. And right now they don't even have that process fully baked in yet. I can't I cannot stress enough how much this is this is why it's coming out next year is that it's not it's yeah. it's not there yet. Uh right now they're doing it with an iPhone. They're not you don't actually do the setup process with the headset itself. You do it with an iPhone that then pipes that information into the headset. And uh, the Lance Ulanoff was one of the folks who uh, was able to try it and I think did a really good job of detailing the experience a little more than I've seen from some folks. They have a special uh, device that people who make lenses for glasses. Zeiss you, makes the lenses. Zeiss. But you have to get your uh, particular prescription. Yes. And so they, they, had, they had a, 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 an optometrist That's what it is. testing yeah. machine. To figure out what to put pop in, and they do this all. It's almost like uh, yeah. assembly line. Huh? Assembly line, yes, yeah. exactly. And so you don't see what's happening behind the scenes. Then you go in; it's there for you to put on. Uh, another thing is that they didn't show this. You don't see this in the videos. You don't see this. I didn't see this in the photos that I was able to capture. But there is also a strap that goes over the head uh, to help add support. It's interesting that they're not showing that. Um, I don't know if that means that eventually they hope they won't have to have that or what, or if it's an optional strap that's in the you know in the eventual box but there's all this stuff that's kind of happening behind the scenes the right reason now that i think yeah, that's kind of important is because one of the oh hey we happen to have <laughs> one oh, yes. uh, right here thank you anthony for bringing yours in uh one of the reasons i think it's important is because one of the use cases might be to have this at an apple store to let people try it or mm -hmm. put it in an ikea showroom to let people do that thing that alex Lindsay thinks everybody wants to do which is <laughs> place furniture in their house but if the setup is so lengthy and and personalized by the well, way it even has iris recognition yes so that it yeah. knows it's you when you put it on uh it is a very personalized device it's not something that you could just have in a mass market situation yeah, and i think at part least, of, yeah. and well, we should say everything i'm saying is about this we don't know what five years or 10 years or exactly. 20 years down the road they'll be. But I have to say, as far as I could tell, from reading a whole bunch of stuff and looking at a lot of videos, A plus in technological innovation. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about some of the features. Really, something only an Apple could do. Uh, in, fact, no, in fact, Meta hasn't done it. HTC hasn't done it. Nobody's done this. Uh, one. Two, uh, I think in 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 terms of performance of delivering a product with uh, that's amazing they've done a plus but i cannot help but point out that ergonomically this is a solid f that that people oh, no. are not looking to strap screens on their faces and so it, well so what happens when you develop something so cool it's almost like they made the world's best i don't know submersible submarine and it's like oh this is amazing but it's just not a it's not something people are looking for. You disagree, Andy? 
Uh, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's an F. I mean, the the thing is, the ergonomics this, are not my, good. My 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 over my overall take on this is that this is not the machine that Apple wanted to show off. This is the they just got impatient. They stopped waiting for the display technology to become small enough, compact enough, and to do what they wanted to do. Uh, to uh, to to make the device they wanted to make so they decided we're going to make something that is a very conventional looking familiar the device will be familiar to people who have been using uh, vr headsets for the past five or six years uh and we will simply move on from there after demonstrating that we know how to run these displays we know how to get enough detail that you can read text pretty much at any size no matter where you put the window in the virtual space that lag is not going to be a problem and that as far as comfort goes, it's going to be as comfortable as such a device can possibly be. And I do notice they, they never mentioned points. the weight. They never mentioned well, the fans. The, the, <laughs> the, well, OK, but the people OK, the people getting back to like I, we, Marquez we've Bradley reading. said it was very heavy. Yeah, and he's and got a most of the he's people, got a pretty strong neck. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. One would think. Most of the most of the people that I read who got the demos, a they said that the setup was actually very very quick for for what it was doing. It wasn't like very very cumbersome. They also mentioned specifically that one of the things that Apple was admitting to was that they were still working on that interface between the device and your head. Uh, they had a, a limited number of sizes available to make sure that things fit correctly to people's heads, but they were working on by ship date having so many of these different variations. Yeah, one of the things you'll do is have your fit. face scanned and they will custom mold a front piece for you. Yeah. So and that's another reason you're gonna yeah. not gonna see these, yeah. these are in a mass and the, market and the, situation. And, and and the other thing is regarding the fan that most of the people I've that again that I've been reading and the one person I talked to said that you really couldn't hear the fan. So Okay. That's fine. It's it's good they have a fan because otherwise I, I, I wouldn't say F. It's, it's, it's F. it's F compared to what uh, it's you. But you are uh, you do have it right on the money. We've been talking about this for for a long time. That this is still. I mean, in I'm, general, VR I'm jo headsets. I'm, jo are, I'm joking. I'm joking yeah. about this, but I mean, he's boy, putting on his view master. You, to, to, to put this, yeah, to put on this, this, you this don't really wear that. big ski yeah. goggle thing yeah. is a really big thing, and I think it was kind. It's kind of adorable that they came up with like the eye view, saying maybe it'll be okay if we have a a lenticular screen that will make people be able to see your eyes behind it. Well, there's another that's how desperate uh, they are. Totally dystopian kind of and weird thing. They showed uh, a father taping a video tape, a uh, 3D stereoscopic tape of his kid blowing out the candles. Yeah, that's great. Except all I'm seeing as a kid is yeah. creepy eyed dad. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone I'd spoke yeah. to did not, uh, no one that I spoke to had a positive reaction to that uh, idea yeah. of having to wear it while we, you capture the I video. I think we don't I live thought, in a I, world where we want to distance ourselves more from people. We go yeah. to movies, not, we, look, I have a credible movie theater in my house. If I'm going to go to the movies, it's because there's other people there. Uh -huh. So I think this is, this is, to me, from an ergonomic and a psychological point of view, this is the wrong direction yeah. now we've all said you know someday they're going to make these as spectacles that'll just you know sit lightly on your nose and you'll have augmented reality show me those then i'll give it an a plus on ergonomics but i don't even think the technology to make that exists so apple is oh. doing a lot of hand waving here for something that i don't i think is dead on arrival personally dead on arrival oh wow they'll sell a million next year yeah that's fine that's my still dead on yeah. arrival Okay. Well, and by the way, I don't think they're making a lot of money. People were <laughs> creeped out about thirty five hundred bucks. That's probably pretty close to the bill of materials. I mean, it's probably yeah, it's you know. it's you can't the, the problem that, that everybody else has now. If if they think if they disagree with you and decide that 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 they want goggles, they want to make them. The problem is Apple has locked up so many patents along five thousand built patents, something they said. Yeah. built along with building something that is so self contained. It will be hard at any price for anyone to put out any piece of device that's going to really compete as heavily with that right now. Um, the biggest problem that HTC and, and Facebook had is, and Google had was a constant discussion about price, which Apple stopped talking about. And Apple was just like, I mean, that isn't the, the highest end headset that I've seen, but it's the highest publicly available one or will be. And the ones that I saw that were that were nicer than this were a quarter million dollars each. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, they, so, so I'm going to um, point out so that... The, so the, the Microsoft Connect, which was the fastest selling consumer product of all time at that time, you probably don't even remember it. <laughs> yes, I remember sold 35 <laughs> million units and is gone and was considered a massive failure. A lot of technology went into that thing. 
Um, yeah, yeah. I, that sold 35 million and was considered a failure. I, I just, well, I don't think this think, is going to sell a million big deal. No, well, I think it'll be, I think the first couple of years, it'll probably be, you know, somewhere in the sub 5 million range. A uh, million is going to be the basement. I think it'll, I don't, I think that 5 million is probably. Well, it could sell ceiling. 35 million and still be a failure. Of course, it's a lot more expensive than the connect. Well, was, it's a lot more right? expensive than connect was. And so, so, the so thing that's is, why it's, still, it's not going to sell 35 million. I might well, add. And, and I don't remember what the numbers are for the watch, but they weren't b very big in the first year. This is year. not the watch. You know, like, this is I, not I, the I, watch. I, I, the watch was relatively much, you know, a 10th the cost. And uh, was an accessory that you could wear that had some utility right out of the box. It was a watch. Yeah. Is the bigger question I, here I, not does Apple need this to be the, the the first big success in this idea of spatial computing? Can we not have a second generation that is the Vision without the oh, Pro that think, then becomes the probably, consumer model? I think you're still probably three or four years away from a consumer a, a model that's less expensive than this one. So this is the stopgap, um, right? But but it's not Absolutely. a stopgap. I don't think it was a stopgap. I think it is another step in the in something they were building from the beginning. So the thing is, is that there's no. Is I that think that they. Gap? No, it's not a stopgap. It's a step because it's not. They're not saying, "Oh, we couldn't get to what we wanted to." I think that they were. They've been building a, a systematic process. This is part of that systematic process. I don't think they got impatient a couple of years ago. I think that they probably had this largely figured out five, four or five years ago. Um, you know, in that as a headset of this is what the first one's going to be. And then the next one will be much more transparent and the next one will be much more. I mean, Apple is oftentimes working at 10 years in advance, you know. And yeah. so the thing is, is that I don't think that this is if they got impatient, it was in 2017 or 2018 or 2016. It wasn't last year or two years ago. And so the thing is, is that they um, so they I think that they the problem is, is that you can't build the set the headset that you want without people interacting with the headset that you can make today. So while you can, while you can yeah, I understand um, that. talk about that. And, and what happened is all the other headsets have been dumbed down because of price. Like even the, even the, even the, the, the Facebook one, that's $1,500, which gave more headroom price has been devastating to these devices because they just require so much technology to be fluid. And so Apple's making it more expensive. They're allowing themselves yeah, to figure I said, that out. The technology is in there that probably costs them, you know, close to that to put seven, 11 cameras and seven oh, it's screens. Incredible. And it's, it's an incredible I understand that. Device. I'm not, you know, they had to cost that much. In fact, Harry McCracken pointed out that the Apple One, which cost $666 in its day, in, the, in 1976 dollars, would have cost $3,554 today. So... It's fifty four dollars cheaper in real dollars than than the <laughs> and, and I got than the uh, Apple my One. Apple yeah. My Apple IIe in today's prices was over five thousand. I just just and, say that those uh, things were much more useful immediately. Oh, this is know. this is not you know no one wants. I hate to tell you, Alex. I know you love it, and there are people who love it. No one wants to put screens on their face. It's a horrible experience. Well, not 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 I yet. I just I, I I do just I do think that this is the best that they could do right now. They had to have a first one of these. So great. Eventually, they colonized a uh, craggy uh, island covered in burnt guano. Congratulations, but, but, you own it. But this and this this would be this would be a very very weird choice for for Meta to have done for Apple. If they have the they, they have, have the ability the to simply say yeah. exactly if I think that they have the ability to launch a product like this without any real expectations that's going to be a success in any way other than it works. Uh, this what they have to what I think that what their priority is that they have to sell the idea that this is going to be so uh, the 4K display that you're going to have off of your Mac is so good that it's going to be the equivalent of a real display for you when you have uh, app windows floating in front of you in front of an environment that's going to be so easy to use as a display that you're going to be able to use it uh, they have to they just have to, and they have to prove the idea that this is not just for uh, training people in uh, how to how to uh, how to maintain an aircraft engine in the military this is not just about gaming that this is going to be a computing platform so i think that their idea is that so long as they develop a first generation of hardware that can sell that that idea that this is a platform for apps not just a way to look at magic dinosaurs jumping up and down on the desk in front of you they will consider that a win for the next for the next generation to come and i think that one of the big things is that while uh, everybody else had to figure out how to build all those things. Apple is making a lot of the apps that already exist just simply work in there. And so yeah. being able to, you're not leaving this to use something else, which is a big uh, hill that everybody else had to to climb is like, what do we do and how do we get people to put it on? Well, there's just a ton of things that you can just go ahead and do in there. And so, and you know, I think a lot of yeah, us have, that's by the way, you, you say it that way. I'd say it's a, uh, Oh, nice lock in Apple. This does not work. <laughs> yeah. If you are not, do you have to own an iPhone to use it? I know it's a standalone computer, but 
Um, oh, probably. I mean, it's not, it's not really going to be aimed at. Nobody Apple. Yeah, well, I'll buy it. Do I need a Mac? Fine. I get an iPad too. Let's just buy everything. It's very good. But, uh, it's a very good ecosystem play for Apple. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. And, it, and, and the it, reason it they could do smart. that, Alex, is because it's basically, you know, iPad OS. I'm sure it's running a mock current. It's very yeah. similar, I think, to iPad OS. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, they're they're good at the uh, at the platform State of the Union th yesterday. They were running through like what it how uh, what it will what will will it be like to take an iPad app and modify it so that uh, it will work on Vision OS again. Assuming that you just you don't want to just have it just be an iPad uh, window that's uh, that's floating in front of you. And really, it's you drag something new into your Xcode and then you simply decide here is your here's your Swift view of your of your current app. Do you want to hang hang things off the bottom of it? Do you want to have uh, uh, certain things and what do you want to add three-dimensional elements to it and if, if that's really all you want to do with it you can basically promote it to being a vision os app very very quickly and of course they want people to be more ambitious than that and i will also say as an aside that if all it does is hey look i can have virtual screens all around me that's not terribly ambitious and i hope that they crack the idea of 3d computing and a 3d spatial computing as something more than I can instead of having to instead of having the next day a three hundred and twenty dollar new monitor to have a fourth or fifth or fifth screen on my desktop. I can just drag a window up there. It has to be better than that. Uh, and I don't think they really made that case yesterday. But again, it's about the ecosystem, about being able to take the app that you created, make amendments to it and turn it into an actual vision OS app that has shadows that reacts to the light that's around you. That when people enter the room, that your app will fade into the background so that, that person can get the focus. All these things you get for free. That's a very, very powerful mojo for a developer. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Your IT skills are outdated in about 18 months. Stay ahead of the curve and strengthen your IT expertise with affordable certification-based learning that will launch or advance your career. Individuals use the code TWIT30 for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash twit. Twit. 